Morning, everybody. How do you show that you are patriotic? Well, one way that we learned when we were little was to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And it was on this date, October 12, in 1892, that the Pledge of Allegiance was used for the first time in school. In the years after the Civil War, there was a real surge in interest in patriotic oaths and pledges, partly because of the war, pictured here, but also because of the surge of immigration, particularly from Central and Southern Europe. And uh, there was concern that these immigrants and their kids would be loyal Americans. So here's George Balk. He was a veteran of the Civil War for the North. And he wrote a pledge in 1885 that predates the modern pledge by about five years. And one of his big concerns was for the children of immigrants. And his pledge said, we give our heads and hearts to God and our country, one country, one language, one flag. So this is Francis Bellamy. He's considered the author of our modern Pledge of Allegiance, although there's some debate about that. He wanted something that would be quick, about 15 seconds, easy to remember. He was inspired partly by this phrase from the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and brotherhood, but he didn't use these three because he wanted something that would be a little bit quicker, but he was partly inspired by that. Now this magazine, The Youth's Companion, was quite popular in our country during the 1800s. And this is where the pledge was first printed. And then the National Education Association, which used to be the National Teachers Association, they agreed to push the idea of all kids in school saying a Pledge of Allegiance. And it was under President Harrison, who was president in the early 1890s, to actually sign a proclamation saying that kids would say the pledge on October 12th in 1892. Now note how the pledge has changed. In earlier years, it didn't say the flag of the United States, but they added that to make it clear that it was the flag of the United States and not the flag of whatever country you were from if you were an immigrant. Now, under God was added in 1954, and at the Gettysburg Address, Lincoln had said the phrase, under God, we shall have a new birth of freedom. So some people think the under God phrase was inspired by Lincoln's use of it at Gettysburg. But most people think it was more to do with the Cold War, where the communist countries were seen as atheistic. And we Americans wanted to show that we weren't. And the Pledge of Allegiance, including under God, would support that idea. And the Knights of Columbus was one of the first national groups to really use under God in the Pledge of Allegiance. And it became more and more popular, and President Eisenhower, pictured here, he signed the legislation that under God should be added to the pledge on Flag Day in um, uh, 1954. Now, the early days, the pledge had kids do what looked a lot like a Nazi salute. And when the Nazis came to power in Germany, this was changed to what we have now, which is basically hand over your heart. And this is one that we're more used to. But uh, the early pledge looked uh, kind of scary. And in 1943, the Supreme Court said you don't have to stand for the pledge. And at the bottom part of this slide, you can see where the judges are saying that you can't really coerce anybody to believe anything. That's part of the freedom we have in our country. Now, many schools still use the pledge or a patriotic event. I think uh, 46 of the 50 states require some kind of patriotic activity or the Pledge of Allegiance. The pledge is still used regularly in Congress, pictured here. In my town of Douglas, we say the pledge before every town meeting. And I think the uh, selectmen before their meetings, they say the pledge too. So it's still quite common. And uh, it's used all over the country. And I think we all agree that particularly we support the idea of uh, liberty and justice for all.